When a U.S. fighter pilot got into a dogfight with a UFO the government explained the rapidly maneuvering lights as a weather balloon. Experts say there are holes to that theory at the time of the incident, Gorman, a 25-year-old former fighter pilot, served as a second lieutenant in the North Dakota Air National Guard. It was this role that placed him behind the flight controls of AP-51 Mustang on October 1, 1948, taking part in a cross-country flight alongside other National Guard airmen. While the other pilots landed at Fargo's Hector Airport, on that fateful evening Gorman stayed in the air in order to get in some night flying time in the cloudless conditions. Having circled his P-51 over a lighted football stadium, he was preparing to land at about 9 p.m. advised by the control tower that the only other plane in the vicinity was a Piper Cub, which Gorman could see about 500 feet below him, he witnessed what he believed to be the taillight of another craft passing on the right though the tower had no other object on the radar. Deciding to take a closer look at the unidentified object, Gorman pulled his plane up and closed to within about 1,000 yards. It was about 6 to 8 inches in diameter, clear white and completely without fuzz at the edges, he said of the object in his report. It was blinking on and off. As I approached, however, the light suddenly became steady and pulled into a sharp left bank. I thought it was making a pass at the tower. Deciding to follow, Gorman tried in vain to catch up with the object, reporting that he finally got behind it at around 7,000 feet, where it made a sharp turn and headed straight for the P 51. Almost at the point of collision, Gorman dived and said the light passed over his canopy at about 500 feet before cutting sharply once more and heading back in his direction. Just as collision seemed imminent once again, Gorman said the object shot straight up in the air in a steep climb so steep that when he tried to intercept, his plane stalled at about 14,000 feet. The object was not seen again, but according to Gorman he had been engaged in aerial maneuvers with it for 27 minutes by the time he brought his plane into land shaken by the encounter, the pilot went on to report he noticed no sound, exhaust trail or odor from the object. And while he had reached speeds of up to 400 mph while in pursuit he couldn't keep up with whatever it was. I am convinced that there was definite thought behind its maneuvers, Gorman said in a sworn statement to his commander. I am further convinced that the object was governed by the laws of inertia because its acceleration was rapid but not immediate, and although it was able to turn fairly tight at considerable speed, it still followed a natural curve. Gorman reported blacking out temporarily due to the excessive speed he reached in attempting to turn with the object. I am in fairly good physical condition and I do not believe that there are many, if any, pilots who could withstand the turn and speed affected by the object, and remain conscious, he wrote. The object was not only able to outturn and outspeed my aircraft, but was able to attain a far steeper climb and was able to maintain a constant rate of climb far in excess of my aircraft. Gorman wasn't the only one to see the mysterious object that night. It was also witnessed by air traffic controllers Lloyd D. Jensen and H.E. Johnson, who were manning the Hector Airport Tower. According to Johnson, who reported seeing the Piper Cub and the UFO at the same time, the object was traveling at a high rate of speed and was fast enough to increase the spacing between itself and Gorman's fighter. Johnson described the object as appearing to be only a round light, perfectly formed, with no fuzzy edges or rays leaving its body. Dr. A.E. Cannon, the pilot of the Piper Cub, and his passenger also viewed the object both in the sky and upon their return to the airport, where they immediately joined the traffic controllers in the tower. Cannon described the light as moving very swiftly, much faster than the 51. Two Civil Aeronautics Authority employees on the ground also reported seeing the object.